Hi everybody, I am Thomas from Virginia Outdoors Unlimited and today we're going to be talking about 8 tips that I have for wood duck hunting. I wanted to make this video because as a waterfowl hunter here in Virginia, I've really cut my teeth hunting wood ducks. They're pretty much what I'd consider our most staple species. We shoot them when our first split opens up in October all the way through the end of January in the cold, the ice, and the snow. So they're kind of a year-round species for us. We can always depend on them. So as a result, I've spent a lot of time targeting them. I feel like I've gained a good bit of knowledge of how to hunt them effectively, what to do, what not to do. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys here today. Hopefully everybody who watches this can take at least one or two things away from the video and be able to apply them to their own situations. So without further ado, let's hop into the tips. My first tip is to look for acorns when out scouting. For those of you that don't know, a favorite fall food source for wood ducks is acorns. I've seen wood ducks do a variety of different things to be able to eat acorns. I've seen them tip up for acorns. I've seen them eat floating acorns, and I've even seen them walk up on land and feed on acorns. I'm sure some of y'all saw a really cool video that came out of Minnesota earlier this year where a deer hunter had a big wave of wood ducks just walk past him in the woods, uh, and those birds were looking for acorns. So that kind of attests to how much wood ducks really do love acorns. I would go as far to say as they might be their favorite food source. When out scouting, I really look for two different things. I either look for bodies of water where you have acorns dropping directly into that body of water, whether that be a swamp, a pond, a stream, really anywhere where you'll have a good accumulation of acorns dropping directly down from a tree, or areas where a stream or just body of water has carried a bunch of acorns down and accumulated them. I've seen this on beaver ponds where a bunch of acorns accumulate right at the beaver pond. I've also seen it on streams where you get acorns accumulating in the eddies on a stream. So those are just some examples of places where you can find good accumulations of acorns that wood ducks will be feeding on. From what I've seen, they also typically like smaller acorns. I actually did some research into this and there was a study done that found that wood ducks like three specific types of acorns the best. Those being pin oaks, willow oaks, and water oaks. And what all those acorns, what all those species of acorns have in common is they're very small. You know, they're not these gargantuan acorns. If you think about a wood duck, he's not going to be able to swallow a massive acorn. But some of those smaller acorns that come from those specific species of oaks, they can feed on them very, very effectively. So if you have the opportunity to scout an area that has acorns, look for those accumulations. Be on the lookout for woodies because a lot of times if you have acorns, you'll have woodies as well. My second tip is one that might seem a little bit common sense, and I'm sure all of you have heard it before, but it has a pretty specific meaning when it comes to wood ducks, and that is to scout out the X. In the morning, a typical wood duck, uh, his plan, if you were to say a plan, is to go from the roost to the feed spot A to B as quickly and as early as possible. They're not going to be your mallard who waits around till 9 a.m. to fly. As soon as he has light, he's going to that feed spot. He wants to get whatever food he can get and basically get his morning flight over with. So when it comes to wood ducks, it's really, really important to be on that X or as close as you can B to that X if you want to be able if you want to be shooting birds coming into land. If you just want to be past shooting birds, and we're going to talk about past shooting a little bit later on, being on the X really isn't that important. But if you want to be shooting birds in your lap, you really do have to be on the X with wood ducks because decoys and calls, you know, it, it can help and it I'm going to talk about it helping a little bit later on. But if you're off the X by 100, 200 yards and you're calling at them, have a bunch of decoys out, a lot of times they're just going to ignore you and go down on that spot that they had already kind of pre-selected where, uh, you know, a spot that they like. On top of finding out the X and being on the X, being set up on the X, it's important to understand the flight path that the majority of the birds are using. Typically, like I said, the birds are going to be coming from a roost straight to their feed spot. So typically most of your birds are going to be taking one specific flight path and due to how fast they fly and how quick they come into land, it is really important to be set up in a direction where you can best be, you know, getting shots in that flight path. If you're, let's say the birds are coming in from the left and you're facing right, you're going to be typically scrambling to be able to get shots on birds. Uh, they're not going to be doing a lot of circles. They're typically just going to dive bomb in. So being set up not only on the X, but being set up in the right direction, understanding where the birds are going to be coming from is really important to have a successful wood duck shoot. My third tip is to keep your decoy spread small and have motion. Because wood ducks are typically focused in on that one specific X, you really don't need many decoys, if any, to get them in your lap. Typically what we do is throw out 6 to 12 wood duck decoys, depending on how many birds are in the area. If there's more wood ducks, we'll throw out more wood duck decoys. If there's less wood ducks, we'll throw out less wood, wood duck decoys. If you don't have wood duck decoys, 
feel free to throw out your mallard decoys. Wood ducks don't really tend to turn their nose up at mallard decoys. I do believe that they like landing with wood duck decoys better, but if you have if you only have mallard decoys, feel free to throw those out. I don't really think it's going to hurt you at all. On top of that, I've had better luck decoying wood ducks when we have just some sort of water motion, whether that be the pulsator or jerk rig, whatever. Just having water motion in that early light situation is really important because it simulates birds coming into land, birds feeding. When the ducks see that water motion, it looks realistic and that's typically what they key in on. Specifically this year when I've been using the motion duck system, which throws out a lot of ripples, the woodies are coming in and trying to land right on top of the, where those ripples are originating from. So definitely having some water motion out I feel like helps a lot. On top of that, wood ducks are a lot like teal and doves in that they really like spinning wing decoys. Many a times I've seen wood ducks just bomb into the spinning wing decoy. So typically we'll bring one or two spinning wings out when we're targeting wood ducks. Later in the year if we're targeting wood ducks, we will leave the spinning wing at home a decent amount of times. It seems like once they get in the area for a lot for a while, they get kind of acclimated to that spinning wing decoy and they avoid it a little bit. So we don't always bring it out, but especially in the early season, always have that spinning wing decoy out. If I was to say kind of the one go-to spread we use for wood ducks, it'd be like six wood duck decoys, a pulsator, and then a spinning wing decoy. Put those six wood ducks on the motion duck system, make a lot of ripples, a lot of water motion, and typically that um, ends up with birds decoying right into your lap. My fourth tip is to drop down a shot size or two. Uh, wood ducks are on average about 25% smaller than mallards. So typically what I would recommend is if you shoot, for instance, what I do is shoot number two steel at mallards, uh, try out number four steel for wood ducks. Just because they're a smaller duck, you don't need that bigger pellet to get adequate penetration. And by using a smaller pellet size, you're going to have a more dense pattern. And there's theoretically less of a chance that a wood duck finds a hole in your pattern. Uh, I've seen guys even use number six steel to great effect on, effect on wood ducks. So it's definitely possible. I think you definitely will notice uh, an increased amount of birds hit and also a decreased amount of crippleds if you drop down a couple shot sizes for wood ducks. My fifth tip is to don't be late in the morning. And this might seem like it's another one that co this common sense, but I've been burned by this before. My buddies have been burned by this before, so I figured I would include it in here. Uh, typically, the most wood duck action you're going to see in the morning is going to be within the first 30 minutes of shooting light. A lot of times the birds will be getting off the roost even before shooting light. So what I would say is if, it, if you have a private spot, you know, typically on public spots, you're going to be out there plenty early trying to beat the crowds. This isn't really going to be an issue. But if you, if you have a private spot, don't be cutting it close. We used to do this all the time. We had, you know, we basically knew we were going to be the only ones in there. We didn't have to get up early. We'd get in there 10 minutes before shooting light, be rushing to throw out decoys, load the guns up real quick and shoot. What I've noticed is that that typically results in poor shooting because you're rushing, you're out of breath in the morning, your heart rate's going really fast. And I just noticed we didn't shoot well on those mornings. On top of that, having a few extra minutes in the morning can help a lot if something goes wrong. Let's say you forget your gun, you forget some shells, whatever it might be. If you're coming in right at shooting light and you forget something, something goes wrong, whatever whatever it might be, a lot of times you can miss out on the main flight of wood ducks. Your hunt's going to be a wash. You're going to be really upset. So having a few extra minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it might be to get in there. If you have an issue, you can have some time to work it out, fix it before shooting light. Uh, it can help save a hunt in a lot of situations. So my tip here, basically for this whole thing, don't be late in the morning. I would just say get up 30 extra minutes early. That's typically what I do. I think about, you know, what is the time I'd ideally like to be ready by and then add 30 minutes onto that. Uh, that gives you time not only to compose yourself, but to fix something if it goes wrong. My sixth tip is to set up where they're coming in. Uh, and this is something I don't think a lot of people really think about. And it's something we've been burned on multiple times, including this year. Uh, you get set up, you get ready for a good wood duck hunt. The first flight of birds comes in, they drop below a tree bank and you cannot see them. Uh, so what I'd say is don't set up looking directly into a tree bank if you can. Don't set up looking into a hill because those birds will absolutely disappear uh, when they drop below that basically skyline. Uh, what I would recommend is set up somewhere, either if you have the opportunity, set up where you have some open skyline in front of you looking out into an open field. If you're set up on a beaver pond, set up looking out over the beaver pond, somewhere where you'll be able to see the birds silhouetted. If that's not possible, let's say you're hunting a hole that's completely wooded in, then the next best thing in my opinion is to set up with the sun in front of you, which might seem counterintuitive. Typically you don't want to be looking directly into the sun when you're waterfowl hunting, 
but in that first 30 minutes of light when the wood ducks are typically going to be flying, that sun's not going to be blinding. It's actually just going to provi provide illumination behind those trees and it'll help you see the wood ducks a little bit better. It's not as good as looking into an open skyline, but it definitely does help in terms of uh, being better than looking directly into a, just a dark tree bank. My seventh tip is to make the right sounds on your wood duck call. And I'm going to be including some sound files throughout this segment to kind of highlight what I'm talking about. But contrary to popular belief, you can use a call when hunting wood ducks to great effect. But a common thing that I see people doing is imitating a wood duck's flying call instead of their sitting call. The two most common sitting calls that a wood duck makes is one a female vocalization and one a male vocalization. And I can actually show you my uh, the female vocalization pretty well. I can make it. It sounds like this. Uh, what I equate it to is a do-eep sound um, versus a drake. That's what a hen makes uh, her sitting sound. A drake sitting sound is more like a zip. And I'll include a little sound file here. Uh, but basically, those are your two most common sitting sounds for wood ducks. You'll often hear them also making what I call a laughing sound. It sounds like this. <laughs> It really, it sounds a, kind of like a wood duck's version of a mallard feed chuckle, and I do think it has something to do with feeding, but you'll often hear them make that sound too when they're sitting on the water. Uh, the zeep and the, and the do weep sound are pretty easy to replicate on a call. Uh, I actually can't do the zeep sound ever since my voice got deeper. I can't do it. I used to be able to do it on this call, but uh, basically the tip is, Make those calls instead of the flying call. What the flying call is, is more like a, just a one note shrill shriek, more like a eep, eep, eep. And I'll include a sound file for that one as well. Um, but basically, if you're making their flying sounds, it doesn't sound like birds are on the water. What you wanna be replicating is birds on the water, um, talking on the water. So definitely make those sitting sounds. Don't make the flying sounds, it'll help uh, birds kind of key in on your location better because they're going to be looking for birds on the water if they're hearing the sitting sounds. My eighth and final tip is to try straying from conventional tactics when targeting wood ducks. My favorite way of hunting wood ducks and my preferred style is decoying wood ducks uh, as they come into their morning feed, but I've had great success hunting wood ducks using other strategies and that's what we're going to get into here. Uh, jump shooting is a favorite for many people including myself. Uh, it's been a way that I've picked up a couple extra birds on many hunts. Y'all have seen it before, you know, hunt somewhere in the morning, float down a creek uh, as I go back to my launch and shoot a couple wood ducks that way. Uh, you can also just walk the edge of a creek, a uh, river, walk down to a pond, jump wood ducks in a variety of different ways. Typically, you, uh, they are hanging out in areas where you can sneak up on them pretty effectively. And jump shooting is super convenient because you can really do it throughout the day. Uh, some of my better jump shoots have been at midday in the afternoon. So it's a great thing to do if you have an unsuccessful morning hunt. Get out, do a little jump shoot in the afternoon, pick up a couple wood ducks, uh, and get a few birds that way. Pass shooting is another very viable option for wood ducks. Because their flight paths generally stay the same from day to day, once you figure out a wood duck's flight path, you know, the main flight for this group of birds, you can position yourself under that flight path and get high volume shooting within reasonable ranges. And this is, you know, a good option if, let's say you can't get permission on the X, you can't get in there physically, something's blocking your way, whatever it is, get under that flight path. Uh, a lot of times those wood ducks aren't going to be flying especially high. You'll still be getting 25, 30, 35 yard shots, killable shots as those birds come over going in to feed. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. This was a fun one for me to make. Wood ducks are near and dear to my heart, so I'm always happy to be talking about them. Uh, if anybody has any questions about any of the things I talked about, any of the tips, uh, leave a comment in the comment section down below. If anybody isn't already subscribed to the channel, if you guys enjoy waterfowl content, I'd highly recommend clicking that subscribe button. I put out a lot of waterfowl videos, various hunting and fishing videos throughout the years, so uh, definitely click that subscribe button, that notification bell. If you guys aren't already following me on my social media platforms, I have Facebook and Instagram. I'll leave links to those down below. Uh, and those are great ways to get in touch with me, Instagram uh, messages I'm pretty good at responding to. So have, hope everybody is staying safe, having a successful season, and thanks for watching.